Hello. The purpose of this video is to provide you with a brief overview of how to write program level learning outcomes. Now we have some great resources available. So the purpose really is just to walk you through some of those resources very briefly, give you a chance to look at them a little bit more on your own and get you started. Now, one of the things I'll mention is that we typically write program level learning outcomes in a group, uh, pairing off to um, theming together, theming different words together, and then pairing off to write outcomes. So one thing I will mention is as you're drafting your outcomes, uh, remember that this isn't usually an activity done in isolation. So really uh, concentrate on creating a good solid draft to start with, um, identify questions that you might have, and then be willing to share them in their draft form with others. Now, the first resource that you'll have on hand is a general theme with a list of words that are representing the general essential program learning that your outcome is going to represent. These came from a faculty brainstorm and you can use those as inspiration to get started. We don't typically have all of the words captured in a program level learning outcome, so don't feel that you have to capture every single idea that's on your list, um, but more use it as an inspiration to get started and steal some good words that work for you. So one document that you'll want to get acquainted with is the, this Writing Program Learning Outcomes Quick Guide. And there's a lot of advice here that I'm not going to walk through all of it, but I will show you the main things to look out for. So first, learning outcomes always complete the phrase, by the end of this program, students will be able to. So that's the stem. And then if you scroll down, there's a recipe here that tells you how you can start writing learning outcomes. So this is a you know, a recipe that works for a lot of people, but it's not necessarily the only way to write outcomes, it's just a spot to start from. So it starts with an action verb, which identifies the depth of learning expected. These are words like identify, explain, apply, analyze, evaluate, create. The second component is a statement of the learning to be demonstrated. What is it that students will be doing? And the final one is a statement that gives disciplinary context about how learning will be achieved. This is the why or the how. Now, this third part can be varying lengths, but basically the main thing you want to keep in mind is it should be obvious that your communication outcome is from your own discipline and not from another discipline entirely. So there should be something that gives an idea of the disciplinary context. This context piece can also indicate the level of depth of learning. So for example, uh, the level of depth of learning for an undergraduate program should look different than that for a PhD. Next piece that when you scroll, when you look at this resource, you'll see some before and afters that show common ways that we improve learning outcomes. One of the biggest ways that you can improve learning outcomes is by really carefully choosing the action verb that you have in your learning outcome. So this is by avoiding words like know and understand, which are difficult to measure, in favor of words like communicate, reflect, evaluate, and analyze. Now, it's actually a harder job than you might think to come up with words that, uh, with action verbs that are most useful or most descriptive uh, and give students the best idea about what they're actually going to be asked to do. Uh, but luckily, we have a great resource for you we have these tables, all with a yellow header at the top, that give you examples of verbs used in different kinds of learning. So we have a verbs here in this column uh, and examples of outcomes that use those kinds of verbs in the final column. So you can have a look. There's cognitive verbs. There's affective or value-based verbs. And there's psychomotor or movement-based verbs. And so you can have a look through those. I don't typically recommend you know, reading the verb list, but when you are stuck on a verb, then you come to this resource and you look for the category that um, most matches what you're trying to do and look at the verbs there and see if any of those match. Now the final piece I'll point out in this exact same resource is questions for reviewing learning outcomes. So after you've written it either together or as a group, you can uh, have a look at each of these six questions and, uh, and that will really help you refine those outcomes and make sure they're specific, measurable, 
and uh, meaningful to your students. All right, let's look at how to write a learning outcome. So on the right hand side, you'll see the stem for all learning outcomes, which is by the end of this program, students will be able to. Uh, now you wanna actually define which program we're talking about. In this case, the program is the Honors Specialization in Agricultural Science. On the left hand side is a theme, which is research in this case, as well as a list of essential program learning beneath. So this is the result of a brainstorm about key ideas that students need, need to be able to do, value, or know by the end of the program. So let's start with uh, an, initial brainstorm, an initial brainstorm of what students should be able to do. Well, the, I think the, one of the main ideas is that they should understand field data and be able to work with it. So we'll write down understand field data, but one of the first things that should stand out to you is that understand is not uh, a great action verb because it's not accessible. So yes, we want students to be able to understand, but it's not clear what a student can do to show that they understand. So we want to get a more specific and accessible or measurable action verb in place of understand. So there's a couple things you can do. You can go to the list at the left, which might have some good verbs right in there, or you can go to the verb list that we've provided on the quick guide to understanding learning outcomes. So we can select some different verbs that are more specific, such as collect, analyze, and interpret agricultural field data. And that sounds more like a student could actually look at that and say, okay, that's what I'm able to do. The other thing I'll point out is that the discipline is not very clear right now. So the students will be able to collect, analyze, and interpret field data. Well, what kind of field data? Because social scientists collect field data, historians collect field data, and scientists collect field data. So if we say agricultural field data, then that will give a little bit more indication about the discipline, uh, the disciplinary context. So we have the action verbs, collect, analyze, and interpret. We have the disciplinary context with agricultural, and we can make the level more clear as well. I can make it more clear and more obvious by saying what they will do or the level at which I expect them to do it. So for example, you can imagine a PhD student carrying out in-depth research, but they have a different set of skills than an undergraduate student completing a lab. So since this is for an undergrad program, I can either um, mention the kinds of things that they'll be doing, like uh, labs or questions that require them to make a hypothesis, um, or I, or I can make it more general and say, given a defined research question and protocol. The full draft outcome then reads, by the end of the program, students will be able to collect, analyze, and interpret agricultural field data given a defined research question and protocol. Now, one tip I can mention is that if you feel like you have multiple action verbs, that's okay, and that's what we had in this example outcome. Usually there's just one, um, but if you feel like you have too many action verbs and there's too many things you're asking students to do related to the same outcome, then the higher level uh, thinking that you, um, the higher level action verbs can subsume the lower level action verbs. So for example, if you're asking students to apply knowledge, then that subsumes the idea of understanding. We assume that they can already understand and define it if they can apply it, and therefore you can just use the apply verb and not have to use define and understand. All right, so that's an introduction to writing learning outcomes. I will mention that that example outcome is completely fabricated, so um, don't feel discouraged. It will take you quite a bit longer to write learning outcomes from scratch. Um, and also just to mention that we typically would use 20 to 30 minutes just writing a single learning outcome. So sit down and be ready to dive into those different verb lists and really think about what it is that you want students to achieve by the end. And then uh, once you have a solid draft, pass that on to others for feedback.